I found myself inhabiting the body of a bullied girl, with a handsome boy pulling my hair in front of me, attempting to press a cigarette butt onto my shoulder. Oh well, but I am this year's boxing champion. I struck him down with a single punch, extinguishing the cigarette on his fair cheek, and emotionlessly patted his face. Remember, from this day forth, I am your grandfather. Upon awakening, I felt a chill on my shoulder. Lowering my head, I discovered myself being held down, my shoulder exposed, while in front of me stood a boy with deep-set eyes, a hint of wickedness in his gaze, pinching a cigarette between his fingers, a smirk playing on his lips as he pressed the burning cigarette towards my shoulder. Several onlookers stood by, observing the scene leisurely. A surge of memories flooded my mind, leaving me dazed. I remembered how I was stabbed because I refused to throw a fight for the boss, who I had intentionally let win. How did I end up here? Looking at the delicate, fair hands that weren't mine, I realized in a flash IV transmigrated. Feeling the searing heat on my shoulder, having been in many fights during my time at the sports school, I had experienced being burned by cigarettes before and knew its sensation. Instinctively, I raised my arm and landed a punch on the fair face before me, knocking him down with a muffled groan, crashing against the wall behind. Then, using one hand to support myself, I brushed off the dirt from my body and looked at the agonized boy on the ground. His thick black eyebrows furrowed in pain, he looked up at me incredulously. He Ruan, you. Having absorbed the memories of this body, I recalled who the boy before me was. Pei Li, the person He Ruan had secretly admired for two years. Unfortunately, Pei Li wasn't interested in He Ruan, but rather in He Ruan's stepsister, Lin Shi, who he followed around incessantly. He Ruan's plight was truly miserable, all instigated by Lin Shi for the past month, He Ruan had been subjected to endless suffering, being bullied, insulted, and slandered, especially when the instigator was someone she liked. The prolonged suppression had driven her to the brink. And then I arrived. The bystanders were stunned, furrowing their brows as they approached, but a glance from me immobilized them, none daring to step forward. Having spent years in the boxing ring, I had long cultivated an imposing aura. While the previous He Ruan might have endured this injustice, I sure as hell wouldn't. When I played with putting out cigarette butts, these brats were still playing with mud. I picked up the cigarette butt from the ground, took a harsh drag, and spat it onto Pei Li's face. He was choked by the smoke, coughing as he glared at me. Cough, He Ruan, have you gone mad? Ignoring him, I muttered to myself, not bad, Yushi, smoking skills. With that, I took the smoldering cigarette butt and pressed it firmly against his face, much to Pei Li's shock hiss. Watching Pei Li's face contort in pain, I chuckled. Remember, grandson. From today on, I am your grandfather. The cigarette butt sizzled on Pei Li's fair face. He was quite the tough guy, biting down to suppress the pain, only letting out a muffled groan. Then, realizing his situation, he raised his hand and swung at me. I blocked his arm, furrowing my brows slightly. Having practiced underground boxing every day, I could easily knock someone out with a single punch. This level of force was child's play for the old me. However, this new body was delicate and weak, making it a bit difficult to withstand. But my ingrained combat skills were sufficient. I dodged to the side along Pei Li's force, grabbing his arm with my other hand and raising my knee to press him down, bending him over. Before, I could have dislocated someone's arm with this move. But now, as a student, I couldn't afford to be too ruthless I applied just enough pressure, leaving Paley pale-faced, beads of sweat dripping from his forehead. He panted heavily but still managed to glare at me, squeezing out words from between his teeth. Are you all just going to watch? Damn it, he won, you're finished. The surrounding people snapped out of their daze, with a male student stepping forward, pointing at me. He won, release him now, or things will escalate. I raised my chin disdainfully at him. Stop babbling nonsense. Come at me together. The male student gritted his teeth, feeling humiliated by my challenge. He gestured to his companions, and they charged at me. I pulled Pei Li in front of me to shield myself from their attacks. Then, I kicked Pei Li's buttocks with force, sending the two of them tumbling away. With a footprint on his buttocks, Pei Li looked at me with reddened eyes, his gaze resembling that of a cornered beast. I stood my ground, mocking them. Useless. Damn it. He roared and charged at me with a punch unyielding as ever. I caught his other hand, knocking him into another student who was rushing towards us. Besides these three boys, there were also two girls nearby. One of them was dumbfounded, standing motionless, while the other, after glancing at Pei Li, shouted angrily and reached out to grab me. He won, 
Are you suicidal? How dare you fight back? I frowned. While there were many female students in the sports school, we never resorted to scratching or hair pulling. It was against the rules. I simply grabbed her wrist and twisted it forcefully. Ah. The girl emitted a shrill scream, her face turned pallid, trembling in agony before me. Her incessant noise annoyed me, so I decided to give her a swift kick, sending her to the corner as well, then landed another punch on the face of the boy who attempted a sneak attack from behind, knocking him down. In less than a minute, out of the five present, four were lying down. I glanced apathetically at the remaining girl petrified by my gaze, she screamed and fled, abandoning even her belongings on the ground. She certainly ran fast. As my consciousness gradually adjusted, I fully embraced the memories, understanding what Pei Li had done to Hi Ruan. Hi Ruan's parents were intervened by Lin Shi's mother, wreaking havoc on others' families wasn't enough, they also sought to exterminate Hi Ruan, both overtly and covertly, a level of malevolence truly despicable. Meanwhile, Lin Shi constantly distorted the truth before Pei Li, pathetically claiming her mother and Hi Ruan's father shared true love, painting Hi Ruan as the perpetual aggressor, secretly bullying her and orchestrating her harassment. Despite the fact that the bruises on her face were clearly self-inflicted, she lied, attributing them to Hi Ruan's hand. Blinded by her theatrical performance, others genuinely believed Hi Ruan was excessively tormenting her sister, siding with Lin Shi and condemning Hi Ruan. In the blink of an eye, Hi Ruan became the scapegoat to give Lin Shi leverage, Pei Li continually harassed Hi Ruan. He turned the fabrications Lin Shi spun into reality, subjecting Hi Ruan to unspeakable torment. From splashing water in the bathroom to slapping her in the hallway, these were mere trivialities, they even found pleasure in burning Hi Ruan with cigarettes, forcing her to drink toilet water, kneel and bark like a dog, and stripping her clothes for videos. Hi Ruan's once fair and delicate back and shoulders were now covered in burned scars. Threatened to keep quiet, she endured in silence, swallowing her pain and never confiding in anyone. When I opened my eyes, they were about to replicate the same torture, with one person already recording on their phone. Hi Ruan was pitiful indeed. She had intended to apply for leave today, having suffered from congenital heart disease since birth. Her frail body, enduring such cruelty, was already at its limit. She knew if she didn't escape now, she would be doomed unfortunately, she was a step too late. I surveyed the people before me, my expression darkening. A bunch of savages. These people, without discerning right from wrong, were already passing judgment, resorting to vigilante justice even before the judicial authorities had spoken. The life of an innocent, a blossoming young maiden, was cut short by the whims of these brutes. How cruel. How despicable. I had seen my share of corpses, countless on the underground boxing ring. But those were for money, signed with life and death contracts, accepting their fates. Unlike these people, who took lives merely under the guise of justice. Hi Ruan had weakly cried for help before her death, yet Pei Li had callously pressed her head to the ground, claiming she was just pretending. Looking at Pei Li's face, which had already endured several kicks, his hair disheveled, his clothes torn, yet he still glared at me, refusing to surrender. I didn't strike his face, it remained as handsome as ever with a circular bloodstain on his right cheek, his features appeared even more exquisite, akin to an enchanting fairy in the wilderness. No wonder Hi Ruan remained infatuated with him until the end. Unfortunately, I only knew how to punch, not appreciate beauty. It was a shame to see such a face before me. I approached, placing a foot on his head. Pei Li writhed in agony beneath my foot, veins bulging on his forehead, glaring at me with such intense hatred, as if he wished to devour me alive. Beads of sweat trickled down his fair forehead, his pale fingers desperately clutching at my boots, hoarsely bellowing. He won, I, I'll kill you. I pressed harder beneath my foot, relishing in his futile struggles and the look of anger on his face. The others nearby dared not utter a word, staring at us in shock, unable to comprehend my sudden transformation. A glance from me, and they immediately played dead on the ground, not daring to breathe too loudly, perhaps fearing I might decide to kick them as well recalling how Pei Li had stepped on Hi Ruan, I ground my foot harder, gratified to hear his suppressed cries of pain. At this moment, Pei Li's face was covered in dirt, devoid of the arrogance he initially displayed when attempting to burn me with cigarettes. Instead, he resembled a peacock with clipped wings, pathetic and disheveled. I crouched down, leaning in close to his ear with a soft chuckle. No wonder you enjoy stepping on people's heads. It's quite exhilarating. I pressed down on Pei Li's head, gripping his pants with my right hand and giving them a sharp tug. Pei Li's expression immediately changed. 
His face flushed red, as if insulted to the extreme, he bellowed indignantly. He Ruan, are you trying to die? What are you doing? I leisurely pressed my knee against his body, which was struggling frantically, taking out my phone and haphazardly snapping pictures of his buttocks and face surprisingly, his reddened expressions were rather picturesque. Since you enjoy taking photos of others so much, I thought I'd let you experience it too. Perhaps you'll develop a taste for it. Despite Pei Li's vigorous struggles, banging his head against the ground and causing his veins to bulge, I paid him no mind, sitting squarely on his back and muffling his groans. Then I instructed several individuals to hand over their phones to me. The two men and one woman exchanged glances, perhaps fearing another outbreak of my wrath and handed over their phones with great humiliation I had each of them unlock their devices, then proceeded to delete all photos and videos related to Hiruan, while also checking for any backups. After completing these tasks, I nodded at them. Very well. If I discover any of my photos or videos leaked, I'll make sure to repay you in kind. And you. With a firm push of my buttocks, Paley groaned in pain. His buttocks were quite fair, and I didn't mind giving everyone the chance to admire them. He. Juan. Paley struggled to turn his head, gritting his teeth, his expression filled with a desire to devour me alive. I smiled faintly and shoved a corner of his phone directly into his mouth. Are you even worthy to call someone father? I've beaten you, cursed at you. I feel satisfied now, ready to tidy up and go home for dinner. However, as I was about to stand up, a sudden cry came from behind. Hiruan, what are you doing? I turned around, squinting the girl who had just arrived behind me had fair skin and a slender figure. Her long black hair was blowing in the wind, giving her an appearance of purity. But only we knew what lay beneath that facade. Lin Shi, the mastermind behind Hiruan's demise, my dear sister, had arrived. Lin Shi widened her tearful eyes, beginning to speak in a manner that dripped with insincerity. He Ruan, what are you doing? Why are you attacking me? Pei Li and the others are innocent. Sure enough, as soon as these words were spoken, Pei Li beneath me began to struggle again, his face turning green with effort, roaring to stand up. I chuckled. Truly, when there's a way out, you don't take it, but you barge into hell's gates. I hadn't even made a move, yet she had come to me on her own. Since she claims to be bullied, I'll just fulfill her wishes. I stood in front of her, tilting my head slightly so, how exactly did I bully you? Lin she sensed that something was amiss, discreetly glancing at me before speaking with tear-filled eyes, Sister, I know you've always misunderstood me. I've never said anything because I regard you as my true sister. But involving others like this, you've gone too far. With those words, she immediately convicted me. Indeed, the people around us all looked at me with resentment. Unfortunately, against fists, all schemes and tricks are futile. I walked up to her, standing tall, and looked down at her. So, how exactly did I bully you? Lin she paused for a moment, then immediately adopted a slightly affected tone as tears welled up in her eyes, although you tore my clothes, slapped me, and pressed cigarettes on me. You're still my sister, so I won't blame you. I nodded. Understood. Since you've said so, I'd feel bad not to oblige your acting efforts. With that, I grabbed Lin Shi's hair and delivered a resounding slap across her face, causing her to recoil I aimed perfectly, ensuring it hurt but wouldn't perforate her eardrums. Lin Shi was stunned. She probably never expected that He Ruan, who had always been timid, would actually dare to slap her. For a moment, she stood there dumbfounded, with no reaction. After three seconds, her expression twisted, and she raised her hand, slapping me in retaliation. He Ruan, you're dead. So, you've lost your composure? You can't even restrain yourself from a slap. I sneered coldly, grabbing her wrist with one hand and delivering a slap to her left cheek with the other, then the right, producing crisp sounds. Lin Shi's fair cheeks turned red and swollen, resembling a pig's head. Lin Shi staggered from the blows, unable to stand steadily. She wiped her mouth, and upon seeing the crimson on her hand, her pupils suddenly contracted as she stiffly lifted her head. Her eyes were bloodshot, staring at me fiercely, her terrifying visage resembling a demon crawling out of hell. If looks could kill, she would have already murdered me with her gaze Hiruan. She screamed hysterically, reaching out to scratch and claw at my face, I'll kill you, I'll kill you. A foolish creature with no memory. Without even looking at her, I kicked her away. Lin she stumbled and bumped into Pei Li. Everyone was dumbfounded, including Pei Li. Even when his beloved was being attacked, he didn't react at all, just staring at us dumbfoundedly. 
I walked over, grabbed Lin Shi's hair, and slapped her again as she screamed. Shut up. You're so noisy. See that? I shook Lin Shi's head and taunted Pei Li, I don't resort to petty tricks like stripping people and taking photos. That's real bullying. If I really wanted to act, all of you would be dead by now. If any of you dare to come bother me again, I'll kill you. Got it? Pei Li was stunned. He didn't even wait for me to finish but just stared at me blankly, as if I had suddenly turned into some kind of monster I shoved Lin Shi toward him, wiping my hands in disgust. Trash. Upon returning home in the evening, as expected, my door was forcefully pushed open. I sighed as I looked at the contorted face of my stepmother, Zhang Yen. In truth, I am a lover of peace, and I truly dislike resorting to violence. Why do these people always come looking for a fight? Zhang Yan's face turned green, and the look in her eyes seemed as if she wanted to stab me to death right then and there. She pointed her finger at me, gritting her teeth, you little wretch, just like your mother, you dare to hit people? I didn't even lift my eyes, your mother is the wretch, your whole family are wretches, wretches. After a moment of confusion, Zhang Yan flew into a rage. She rushed over in three steps and raised her right hand to viciously slap my face. Uncultivated creature, today I will educate you on behalf of your parents I'll smack that foul mouth of yours. Having dealt with the young, now comes the old. Annoyed, I grabbed Zhang Yen, twisted her around, and delivered a swift blow. Who do you think you are? Daring to educate me on behalf of my parents. Your mouth seems quite foul, perhaps I should educate you on behalf of your parents as well. With that, I landed two resounding slaps on her causing Zhang Yan's expensively maintained face to echo with the sound of the blows. Satisfying. Zhang Yan was stunned by my actions, and it took her a moment to scream and claw at me with her red nails, you dare to hit me, I'll kill you. Why are these mother-daughter pairs so fond of clawing at people's faces? What's wrong with them? I furrowed my brow, planning to give her a harsher lesson, when suddenly the door rang. My father had returned. Zhang Yen immediately regained her composure she quickly withdrew her hand, straightened her clothes, and whispered to me. You little wretch, you're finished. With that, she hurriedly ran out to lodge a complaint. I leisurely followed her out, seeing her crying and throwing herself into my father's arms, sobbing. Old he. The two of us can't survive like this. You must do something. My father stiffened, his hand paused midair where he was adjusting his tie, and he glanced at the secretary who was still outside the door. Seeing his boss's family affairs, the secretary smiled awkwardly, pretended he hadn't heard anything, and left. From the memories of the original body, I knew that He Daiming was a man who cared about his reputation the most. He divorced He Ruan's mother because he found her unsuitable to take out, so he found the well-preserved and attractive Zhang Yen. Now, Zhang Yen was making a scene in front of outsiders, which he definitely wouldn't appreciate. Sure enough, He Daiming took off his suit jacket and hung it on the coat rack, frowning. What kind of appearance is this, crying and making a scene? People will think we're abusing you. Zhang Yen quickly realized her impulsiveness she immediately softened her tone and apologized, it was my fault for not considering everything. But this situation is not entirely my fault, he, we really can't stay here anymore. What happened? He Daiming asked sternly. It's He Ruan. Zhang Yen burst into tears, complaining as she cried, He Ruan has always resented the two of us, but I always thought she was just a child and tolerated her. But look at how she beat up Lin Shi now. I just said a word to her, and she even hit me. Look at my face. Lin Shi also approached, crying, and said aggrievedly, Dad. I restrained my strength when I hit her. Now Lin Shi's face is back to normal, and you can't tell I hit her. I only hit Zhang Yen twice, and her face wasn't even swollen. Sure enough, He Daiming looked at their faces and wondered, there's nothing wrong? Ruan Ruan, did you really hit them? He Ruan had a weak character outsiders didn't know, but family members were well aware. I knew He Daiming wouldn't believe He Ruan would strike them. Who wouldn't know how to do it? I immediately lowered my head, laughing bitterly, Dad, I don't know why Auntie said that about me. Do you think I'm that kind of person? As soon as these words were spoken, He Daiming looked at Zhang Yen with a somewhat unpleasant expression, Ruan Ruan wouldn't even step on an ant, how could she hit you? You're going too far. To be honest, He Daiming was not a qualified father. Zhang Yen and Lin Shi intentionally or unintentionally targeted He Ruan, and He Ruan had told him about it before, but he suppressed it for the sake of the family's face, only warning them. 
but no matter how irresponsible he was, he could still distinguish between his biological daughter and someone else's daughter he Ruan was scared into silence by Lin Shi's threat, but I wasn't afraid. Who would be afraid when it comes to reporting the truth? Zhang Yan looked injured, trembling as she spoke, he daming, do you think I would deliberately frame her? Her acting skills suddenly exploded as she collapsed on the sofa, crying bitterly, I've been with you for so long, and this is how you see me? What am I after? Just as he daming was about to show pity and go to comfort her, I raised an eyebrow on the side and whispered. After money, right? By the way, you just bought your brother a villa last month. Does my dad know? Are you trying to kick me out and monopolize my dad's property? This was something he Ruan had overheard before, but she never dared to tell he daming because of Lin Shi's threat. Let me be the good guy this time. Sure enough, as soon as he daming heard this, his expression darkened he looked at Zhang Yen, his eyes full of scrutiny, his previous pity gone. You bought your brother a villa? How come I didn't know? I incited further, how would you know? I just happened to overhear it. It's called Wan Jing Yuan, over 500 square meters. My dad's expression changed immediately. You said you were going to invest before, is this what you meant by investing? Zhang Yan panicked, her eyes darting around, unable to meet my dad's gaze, a dong is getting married. I'm his big sister. I have to help him. Daming, I was going to tell you about this right away. She glared at me fiercely. I smiled back. All right, you're very good. He daming narrowed his eyes and pointed at Zhang Yen. Tomorrow, I will freeze your cards. Since you're so partial to your brother, let him support you. Upon seeing Mr. He genuinely angry, Ms. Zhang immediately became frightened. She couldn't care less about reporting me anymore, and hastily began to placate Mr. He, tearfully offering explanations. Darling, I truly didn't mean to conceal anything from you. I just didn't know how to broach the subject with you. My younger brother has grown up without finding a suitable partner, and as his elder sister, I couldn't bear to see him in such a state. Mr. He impatiently shook her off, his anger burning fiercely, enough. Tomorrow, I'll go back and examine our accounts. I want to see where you've been spending money behind my back. Ms. Zhang glared at me viciously, and I responded with a sardonic gesture. Little did I anticipate that bullying he won to such an extent would prove so futile with this mother-daughter duo. A life for a life, would ensure they atone for their treatment of Yuan. Following this incident, both Lin Shi and Pei Li grew to detest me. However, fearing retaliation, neither dared to confront me directly, resorting instead to covert provocation. Realizing she couldn't bully me anymore, Lin Shi began spreading rumors about me, accusing me of mistreatment, promiscuity, and involvement with unsavory characters Pei Li joined in the defamation, and within half a month, the rumors about me had spread far and wide, tarnishing my reputation. Now, I was truly isolated. My classmates regarded me with disdain, avoiding me whenever possible. Some even spat on my desk during class. When I raised the issue with the teacher, I was met with a disgusted glance. Lin Shi chimed in, He Ruan, it takes two to tango. Why does everyone pick on you? Maybe you should reflect on your own behavior. Yes, the teacher nodded in agreement, loudly proclaiming, if you don't want to attend class, then leave. One rotten apple spoils the whole barrel. I calmly surveyed the classroom, then walked out without a word. Pei Li smirked triumphantly, shooting a taunting glance my way. I ignored him. Lin Shi was naturally malicious, while Pei Li was both foolish and malevolent they unjustly targeted a fellow student, committing the most despicable and heinous acts. With his privileged background and good looks, Pei Li had coasted through life effortlessly, arrogantly demanding that no one inform their parents after I had beaten him but he wouldn't take such a loss lying down, he would surely seek revenge. As would Lin Shi. The moment I awaited was fast approaching. After school, as I was about to leave, a girl suddenly grabbed my arm, smiling and inviting me to her birthday celebration at the luxurious pavilion tonight. I looked at her hand on my wrist and smiled. I recognized this girl, who had been friendly with Lin Shi before. Though she hadn't directly participated in my bullying, her attitude towards me had never been friendly either. Now, inviting me to her birthday party seemed out of character for her, undoubtedly at Lin Shi's behest. Nevertheless, I agreed readily, of course. It was the perfect opportunity to resolve this matter once and for all the girl seemed surprised by my quick acceptance, her words of persuasion caught in her throat, leaving her somewhat embarrassed. All right then, at seven o'clock tonight, luxurious pavilion, third floor mountain and water hall. 
Don't forget, she stammered. I nodded, I won't. That evening, I arrived punctually at the private room. The lively atmosphere suddenly quieted as soon as I entered. Paley couldn't help but smirk derisively upon seeing me. Look who's here, it's the little troublemaker, he sneered. I grinned back, ah, the good grandson. Already forgotten your grandfather? Need me to jog your memory with some pictures? Pei Li's face paled instantly, as if he'd seen a ghost, and he clenched his jaw in anger. Lin Shi, perhaps fearing I might leave, quickly intervened, gesturing to the empty seat beside her, big sister's here. Please, take a seat. Without a glance at her, I walked past and took a seat elsewhere Lin Shi's hand gripping the chair turned pale, and her gaze towards me grew hostile. The dishes at luxurious pavilion were excellent, but none of my classmates dared to speak to me. I savored the solitude, ignoring the children playing their childish games. Unable to bear seeing me so composed, Paley soon started looking for trouble again. How can such shameless women exist in the world? Stupid and wicked, yet they still have the nerve to walk this earth. If it were me, I'd find a corner and die, a waste of oxygen. I calmly set down my chopsticks and looked at Paley, well, why haven't you gone to die yet? Need any help? Paley froze, suppressing his anger, I wasn't talking about you specifically. Why do you always assume the worst? I'm not as shameless as you. You're the epitome of shamelessness. Truly despicable, I continued. Unable to bear it any longer, Paley slammed his hand on the table and stood up abruptly, pointing at me, he Ruan, stop being so shameless. Do you want to die? The sudden outburst startled everyone in the large room, and no one dared to speak as they nervously watched our exchange I swallowed the last piece of beef in my mouth, leaned back in my chair, and looked at Paley with a cool gaze. Are you asking for a fight again? Let's go outside and settle it. Paley immediately deflated like a disheartened hen, his countenance turning grim, his eyes darting around unable to speak. It was obvious that he still vividly remembered the previous beating. I remained expressionless, your fists had better be as strong as your words, or else keep your foul mouth shut. Pei Li's face flushed red, torn between wanting to curse and fearing another beating. Lin Shi, watching him suffer, quickly stood up with a disgruntled expression. He ran, what are you doing? We are all classmates, how can you speak so viciously? You should apologize to Pei Li immediately. I raised an eyebrow, who are you to demand an apology from me? You too, haven't had enough of getting slapped around? Born with a wretched fate, aren't you? Lin Shi gripped the tablecloth tightly, grinding her teeth with resentment, give yourselves three seconds to sit down, I said as I wiped my hands with a tissue, otherwise, I might have to show our classmates a thing or two. Pei Li seethed with hatred, glaring at me as he reluctantly sat back down with Lin Shi. Your triumph may not last long, Pei Li said through gritted teeth. Said the one whose fate is uncertain, I replied with a smile. The atmosphere shifted several times during the meal, and eventually, the classmates grew restless. Having eaten my fill, I stood up to give the gift to the girl and signaled my intention to leave but she unexpectedly grabbed my arm and whispered, he ran, I need to go to the school for a moment. I left my bag there. Can you accompany me? The Jinxio Tower is quite close to our school, just across two unlit alleyways. I couldn't help but think how crude Lin Shi's tactics were, but as soon as she uttered those words, I understood her plan. I casually grabbed a dining knife from the table and discreetly slid it into my boot where no one could see. Sure, I said, taking her hand. Let's go. The girl hesitated for a moment, then discreetly glanced at Lin Shi. Upon seeing her nod slightly, she enthusiastically pulled me out the door. Once we exited through the back door of the hotel, we entered a pitch-black alleyway. In the dim moonlight, I noticed the girl beside me looked nervous, but she reassured me, don't worry, I often walk this way. It'll be fine. Is that so? I nodded absent-mindedly, then subtly glanced behind me, catching a glimpse of a skirt whisking past so foolish, their footsteps were so heavy, even a deaf person could hear them. I paid it no mind and continued following the girl. The narrow alley was eerily quiet, and with the moon obscured by clouds, the already dark road became even dimmer. I counted the time, it should be about time. Sure enough, the girl pretended to suddenly exclaim, I forgot my phone. Wait for me, he ran. My phone is still at the hotel. I'll be right back. Without waiting for my response, she dashed back in the direction we came from. I stood there watching her disappear into the darkness. Glancing ahead, I noticed five men had appeared out of nowhere. They looked sleazy, wearing tight pants and dyed hair, with metal tags hanging from their necks. 
A stout man in a black jacket approached purposefully, grinning at me with a mouthful of yellow teeth. Beauty, are you alone? Want to have some fun with us, brothers, he chuckled I chuckled too. I thought it would be a bigger setup, but it turns out Lin Shi and Pei Li managed to gather such a motley crew. These types wouldn't even qualify as lackeys for the big brother. I didn't bother being polite and retorted, have fun with your mom. Go back and play with her. The man was taken aback, apparently not expecting me to curse. A moment later, one of his lackeys behind him furrowed his brows, flicking the cigarette butt from his mouth, muttering, why are you talking back to black brother? Don't appreciate kindness, huh? You refuse a toast, but you have to drink a forfeit, huh? Black Jacket gestured to his men. Get him. I want to see if he's as tough as he talks when we're the ones calling the shots. Arguing with these small-time thugs, if my old friends found out, they'd laugh at me for sure. Now I understood Lin Shi and Pei Li's plan. It was nothing more than hiring some so-called gangsters to play dirty tricks unfortunately, these students had no idea what real gangsters were like, and ended up with this bunch of lowlifes who couldn't even make it onto the stage. I didn't know what deep-seated resentment could drive two 17 or 18-year-olds to resort to such despicable means to deal with a girl. But I was genuinely angry. The malice of children is actually more cruel and terrifying. If the real He Ran hadn't died and suffered this ordeal, could she still survive? Even if she survived, her remaining days would be lived in shadow. Perhaps her life would be ruined forever. Did this group of people never consider that malice would come back to bite them? For every action, there is a reaction. It seems their retribution is me. My face turned cold, and I didn't hold back anymore. I knocked down the first thug who approached me with a punch, then quickly ran up the wall to kick him in the back with my knee, right in the lumbar region. This blow, if full force, could have broken his spine, but I didn't want to get into legal trouble, so I used only 50% of my strength, causing him to faint on the spot, damn it. Black Jacket was dumbfounded. He's tough. You guys didn't bring anything with you? I haven't been this angry in a long time, I didn't bother to show off. I kicked another thug in the chest, sending him tumbling into a pile of garbage in the corner, then twisted the knife from Black Jacket's waist, swiftly twisted his arm behind his back, and pressed him to the ground. Thinking of messing with me? Didn't your ancestors warn you in your dreams that you'd be in trouble? I twisted his neck and spun him around with a kick, kneeling on the ground and flourishing the dagger in my hand. The silver moonlight bathed the blade of the dagger, casting a pristine and icy glow weight. Black Jacket was terrified, beads of sweat as big as beans dripping down his forehead, panic-stricken as he stammered. Beauty. Heroin. I was wrong, I was wrong, I, I was also acting on someone else's orders, I. I'll reward you by confiscating your tools of crime, I said coldly, driving the dagger mercilessly towards his legs. Ah. A piercing scream echoed through the entire dark alley startling the crows perched on the wall, causing them to flap their wings and fly into the sky. One of the thugs who had just regained consciousness from his coma heard the scream and rolled his eyes back in his head, fainting again. I pulled the knife out of the brick crack, smelling the pervasive stench of blood and urine. This worthless scum, I was just trying to scare him, yet he ended up wetting himself. Black Jacket trembled with fear, his eyes glazed over, almost completely dumbfounded. After a long while, his lips trembled, tears streaming down his face uncontrollably disgusted, I quickly stood up, wiped the dagger clean, and tossed it onto him. There were a man and a woman who came to find you, right? I've already beaten them before. Did they not tell you that I can fight? There's a cause for every grievance, and a debtor for every debt. Who are you blaming for this ordeal? You know deep down. I glanced at him, I'm in a good mood today and don't want to act. But if you dare to appear in front of me again, I won't be so lenient, understand? Black Jacket and his lackeys were terrified, bowing their heads incessantly, understood, understood, we won't come again. Thank you, boss. I cast a glance at the trash can behind them, smirked, and turned to leave. Once they couldn't see me anymore, I climbed over the wall and walked back from the other side, peeking through the cracks in the brick wall at the alleyway where I had just been. Sure enough, two people emerged from behind the trash can Paley furrowed his brows and shouted loudly at the group of people, you guys aren't streetwise, are you? You said it would be fine, so why are you so useless? Lin Shi was furious too, her plan ruined, you can't even take a picture of a woman, are you trying to scam us? Give the money back. It was indeed their money. So ridiculous. I dare to speak to them like this because I have a strong fist, and they don't hesitate because they're tough, right? 
Black Jacket had just lost face in front of his lackeys, and when I was around, he was too scared to say anything. Now, all that was left was anger. He squinted his triangular eyes and looked at Pei Li and Lin Shi, his voice dripping with menace. You knew that woman could fight so well, yet you didn't tell us? Are you trying to fool us? Pei Li felt guilty and flustered, you guys are supposed to be streetwise. Who would have thought you couldn't even handle a woman? Truly useless. Heblack Jacket laughed bitterly, gesturing to his lackeys. We all received the task. Who wouldn't take their turn? Beauty, you're not bad either. The thug I kicked the hardest, rubbing his back in pain, glared fiercely at Pei Li, Black Brother, this guy's got smooth skin and good looks. He's even prettier than this chick. What do you guys want? Lin Shi only felt scared at this moment, taking a few steps back. Pei Li, still trying to be tough, cut the crap. If you dare touch us, I'll kill you. Ha ha ha, Black Jacket sneered, slowly approaching with his lackeys, how do you plan to kill me, brother? Lin Shi screamed and tried to run, but she was blocked by a thug with white hair on the side. Ah. Pei Li gritted his teeth and rushed up, let her go. He still had some fight left in him, actually landing a punch on Yellow Hair's face. Yellow Hair was punched so hard that he spat out a mouthful of blood and cursed angrily, grappling with Pei Lithe women's screams, cries, men's shouts, and the sounds of fighting were all mixed together, creating a chaotic scene under the moonlight. I withdrew my gaze, hands in my pockets, and strolled home casually. To ensure a good night's sleep, I messaged he Daming saying I was going to my aunt's house to sleep and didn't go home directly. Tonight was destined to be a sleepless night. Pei Li and Lin Shi, these despicable villains, are bound to be consumed by their own malice. 07. Sure enough, the next morning when I went to school, I heard a shocking piece of news. Lin Shi was nearly assaulted, and Pei Li, in order to protect her, seized a knife from one of the thugs, stabbing three people on the spot, resulting in one death and two serious injuries. He also got stabbed once, and it seems the sensitive area he was stabbed in might affect his reproductive function. This explosive news spread quickly within a week, the entire city knew about it, and it even became a hot topic on Weibo. Initially, the headlines were about a boyfriend defending his girlfriend in self-defense, and all netizens demanded that the judge declare Pei Li innocent, self-defense. The students in the school were also discussing it fervently, Pei Li is truly a good person, so manly. I think he did the right thing. Yes, otherwise, would you watch your girlfriend suffer like that? I've already supported him under the Weibo post. I sneered, waiting for the public opinion to change. This matter has been blown out of proportion, undoubtedly funded by the Pei family, trying to manipulate justice with public opinion. But, are the rules so easily manipulated? As anticipated, the police investigation results came out a week later. Surprisingly, that group of thugs turned out to be recruited by Pei Li and Lin Shi themselves. They had planned to coerce someone into a compromising situation for a photo, but when it didn't work out, a confrontation ensued, leading to the brawl moreover, the alleged assault on Lin Shi was merely verbal, with no physical aggression initiated by either party initially, it was Pei Li who instigated the physical altercation. Instantly, public opinion erupted. Everyone was shocked to learn that the so-called Pei Li and Lin Shi, whom they had been supporting all along, were actually such malicious individuals. Their ordeal was entirely self-inflicted, and this was just retribution. Under the overwhelming backlash of public opinion. Everyone was furious. Beasts. To be so venomous at such a young age, and to hire thugs for such despicable deeds. Now they've got what they deserve. Truly, what goes around comes around. They must be sentenced to death. Such vile creatures are a scourge to society. I know the girl, her mother is a homewrecker, she ruined someone else's family, and now she wants to ruin her stepsister to me God, how can there be such people in the world? They should both be sentenced. Our city, though not large in size, quickly turned against Pei Li and Lin Shi, condemning them almost universally. Lin Shi cried her eyes out at home, looking at me with hatred as if everything was my fault. He Deming also learned about this incident. He was shocked by Lin Shi's malice and felt ashamed of his actions, so he promptly kicked out both Zhang Yan and Lin Shi, and divorced Zhang Yan. After the divorce, Zhang Yan had nowhere to go, so she and Lin Shi rented a basement of about 20 square meters. The mother and daughter quarreled every day, blaming each other constantly. At night, Zhang Yan would cry and call He Deming, begging for forgiveness, but He Deming remained unforgiving. They came for He Deming's money, but ended up with nothing after the divorce. The case gained more traction each day, 
and amidst the public outcry, Pei Li and Lin Shi's trial began Lin Shi was somewhat luckier because all the dealings with the thugs were orchestrated by Pei Li, leaving no trace for her. Hence, she was acquitted on the spot. Pei Li, however, was not so fortunate. The claim of self-defense was untenable since he was the one who initiated the altercation that night. In the end, he was convicted of intentional assault, given the severity of the offense. However, due to his status as a minor, he received a lighter sentence of life imprisonment with lifelong deprivation of political rights. I attended this trial. Pei Li was completely different from the first time I met him. Back then, his features were striking, his appearance refined, the epitome of an arrogant rich young master. But now, he stood there with shackled hands, his gaze vacant, staring blankly ahead. Dark circles under his eyes, his face pale without a trace of color, utterly despondent, like a peacock stripped of its feathers, reduced to a mere chicken when the verdict was announced, Pei Li's mother fainted on the spot, and Pei Li cried hysterically, tears and mucus streaming down his face as he knelt and begged the judge for another chance. Perhaps he truly realized that his life was over, that he was truly scared. But it was too late. The subsequent events were heard through hearsay. Pei Li's mother blamed everything on Lin Shi, believing that this vixen seduced her son and led him to such ruin. She actually hired someone to assault Lin Shi, and the photos and videos flooded the internet, landing her in jail as well. Lin Shi was finished. This was her plot against Yuan, but it backfired on her. Apparently, she couldn't handle it psychologically. Some classmates murmured sympathetically that she later developed mental illness, and her mother had no choice but to send her to a psychiatric hospital it's said that she's gone insane now, often wielding a knife and posing a serious threat. Upon hearing this, I was stunned, feeling a mix of emotions. I didn't seek revenge on Lin Shi anymore, but fate seemed to dictate its own retribution. She too was dragged into hell by her own bitterness. Perhaps this was the best way to honor Hi Ruan. That night, I slept soundly. I dreamt of a face, one that used to look back at me in the mirror every day. Hi Ruan bowed to me, her demeanor gentle, though she shared my face, she felt entirely different. She smiled and thanked me, thank you. I'm leaving now. There's nothing I can do to repay you, so you can use this body. When I woke up, I realized my body felt much lighter than before. It seemed like whatever burden I had been carrying had been lifted, and an indescribable coldness had dissipated, leaving me feeling relaxed perhaps it was the last bit of resentment from Hiruan before her death. She had finally found closure, able to move on peacefully. I got up and walked to the window. The moon outside was huge, casting a bright light on the ground. The leaves of the cedar tree rustled in the wind, and the insects chirped incessantly. I chuckled. May you be reborn into a better life next time. In this life, I'll live on for you. We all have a bright future ahead.